Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Billig, and I am excited to welcome you to the Needles hosted webinar. Today, we're going to be diving into exactly what this offering entails and how it can benefit your firm. But first, some housekeeping. I'm joined today by Needles Company President, Mary Ellen Belusi, who's going to act as my webinar wingman. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, she'll be collecting questions from you guys throughout the webinar. Once we get through the main content, then we'll tackle as many of those questions as we can at the end. You can submit your questions from the questions pane of the control panel, which is located on the right-hand side of your screen. If your control panel has collapsed, which it will do if you're not clicking around on the screen for a while, look for an orange box with a white arrow and go ahead and click that. It will re-expand the control panel for you. We're also experimenting with our webinar tech a bit uh, as we do more and more of these. So we may actually ask you guys a few questions today as we go. Uh, this is the middle of the week. I know everyone is busy. So we're going to try and keep things tight and give you everything you need to know in about 45 minutes. All right. So without further ado, let's dive in. Needles hosted is not some uh, mini web product like Needles, but on a website. This is a full cloud platform. And we're not just talking about Needles here, which is only one gear in the machine of your firm. We're talking about moving your entire practice into a robust, accessible, and adaptable cloud-based environment. I'm sure many of you have uh, experience with using remote desktop or something similar when you're out of your office. Well, the concept is the same. When you come into work, you and every other member of your staff sit down at your desk and on your computer is a single login icon. You launch that program, enter your password, and a whole new world opens up. You'll find yourself in a brand new Windows environment and you now have access to everything, Needles, Outlook, Word, QuickBooks, all of your contacts, all of your documents, every digital asset your firm possesses. And that single little icon, it doesn't need to just be on your office computer. You can put it on your laptop for when you're on the road. You can put it on your home machine. You can add one to your tablet. Anywhere you have a solid internet connection, you can remote into this cloud-based environment. So if you can access it from anywhere, where is this information actually being stored? Because the word cloud is thrown around a lot and it means different things to different people. But at the heart of it, really a cloud is someone else's server. And that server could be in the basement of your building, it could be on the other side of the planet. And there is definitely levels of quality when it comes to cloud-based environments. So let's talk about the facility that we're using. We are talking a first class data center, top notch. Uh, most of you are probably aware of our merger uh, with TrialWorks last year, and that merger had a lot of benefits uh, and a lot of brain power has been shared between the two entities over the last several months. But one of the best things that the needle side gained access to was this data center. The TrialWorks team has been hosting their clients uh, within this facility uh, for six years now and they haven't had a blip. Uh, I got to go down and visit uh, the data center and it's in downtown Miami. Uh, and you might think, it's the age of the internet. Why would you pay to have you know, a server farm right in the middle of downtown Miami? Why not park it in Podunk somewhere? Location is actually key. This place was amazing. I was a kid in a candy store. First, the security is insane. I, I have gotten through airport security with my wife and children faster than I managed to get through the lobby of this building. Once you get inside, everything is just, ah, oh, I, I am a giant nerd. So to others, it might be just row and row and row of blinking lights, but I just see all that capacity and it, I geek out. So the facility itself is actually across the street 
from the main hospital in downtown Miami. And why that's important is that it actually shares uh, the same electrical conduit. It's in the same electrical sort of hub as that hospital, which is obviously crucial to the infrastructure of the city. So it's really in a great spot uh, safety-wise for electricity. It also happens to be right on top of one of the main internet trunk lines coming into the eastern seaboard. So you have those giant underground, underwater cables that run across the ocean serving the internet between the US and Europe and Africa. Well, some of those lines, the major ones, come right into Miami and this data center, again, sits right on top of it. So as far as this 99% uptime guarantee is concerned, we're really in the right spot to deliver on that uh, and last year we got a true test uh, because uh, Hurricane Irma uh, made landfall when we were only a couple months in and only had a handful of needles clients using the facility yet. And I was nervous. I mean, that was that was like a category five hurricane. And the data center took it without a blip. The trial works offices in Miami were down for a week, as was a good portion of the state. But this building, not one second of downtime. It was really impressive. Um, so in addition to that, uh, the data center is fully HIPAA compliant. So the security is in place, not just from, you know, uh, an electricity and connection perspective, but from, you know, a digital security perspective as well. And the data backup redundancy, anyone that's seen me speak live or at one of the CLEs knows that I love to bang the data backup drum constantly. Well, in this scenario, we get to get involved in your backup, not just for your needle system, but for your files and everything as well to make sure that it's done properly. So the backups happen multiple times per day, and then a copy of that backup is actually moved to a separate piece of hardware still in the data center, so a completely second server specifically set up for backup, and then that data is regularly encrypted and then uploaded to the Amazon cloud as a tertiary backup. So if this building you know, goes down, and the only way at this point I see that happening is if the entire state of Florida slides into the ocean, your data is still protected. So we take that very, very seriously, this facility, it's geek heaven. Um, so what does this package include? you know you've got your needle system and we're gonna put your needle system up in that cloud and we're gonna protect the needle system and its data and the documents. But like I said before, it's not just about needles. This is a whole environment we're talking about here. So you get Windows obviously built in for every user, but every user also gets a full copy of the latest version of Microsoft Office. So you've got your Outlook, your Word, your Excel, your PowerPoint, you don't have to uh, buy the new versions every time they come out to keep everybody updated or pay like uh, the monthly recurring SaaS model uh, for Microsoft, we take care of that for you. And we'll upgrade those programs for you. You will always have the latest and greatest built in. In addition to that, uh, we take care of all the antivirus and anti-spam needs. Uh, if I didn't mention it before, we're actually hosting your email if that's what you want. We'll take all of that, the Exchange server, bring it all in-house so it's all in one place, it's all under one roof, and it's all taken care of. And because we're handling all of these different facets of your firm, we have a dedicated support team specifically for all of that stuff. Now, you guys have dealt with needle support for years. You know how good this team is, and you know how seriously we take our clients. But their focus was and will continue to be the needles program itself, making sure it's working well for you and that the connections to the other products that it ties into is working well. We have a whole nother team with that same level of dedication and quality focused on all these other aspects to make sure that the rest of your environment functions just as well as your needles does. All right. So 
what is supported because this is something different now you're not you know talking about a server in your own office or down the hallway maintained by chuck whoever's taking care of it for you you're entering into a new situation what are our options here okay we've got a couple of cool things so first off apple mac computers ipads are supported so if you have uh, Mac users or wannabe Mac users in your office that want to have those laptops that want to travel with the, you know, the, the sleek, light, silver, high-tech laptop, you can do that because you can put that icon on an Apple just as easily as you can on a Windows. And uh, Mary Ellen, can we try our, our first poll here? Because I'm curious. Uh, we've got uh, 62 people in the room. Uh, and I'd like to run a poll right now to see how many of you, honestly, like me, are die-hard Windows Microsoft guys. I, the, the new Microsoft laptops are amazing, but I want to see how many Apple fanboys we have. Can I'm you opening the poll now. trigger that poll for me? So I think it's a simple yes, no. Uh, go ahead and click on your screen. Let us know if your firm is die-hard Microsoft or maybe you've got some Apple lovers in-house. This is my way of also making sure you, no one's falling asleep here. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a few more seconds. Okay. We still got answers coming in. I tell you what, I'm gonna keep going then, and you let us know when we have uh, our our responses. Um, in addition to Apple products uh, and the entire Microsoft Office suite, uh, we've obviously got support for PDF and Adobe. Um, oh, I saw it change. Do we uh, do we have our results? How do we do? We do. We've got 49% have Mac users or requested Mac users. 51% do not. Wow. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. Okay. Well, you guys have been waiting for it. Here it is. For those of you that uh, are still the diehard PC folks, don't worry. I'm with you. Um, in addition to uh, Apple and obviously support for Adobe products, uh, if you are not using dual monitors, I can't recommend it more highly. I love it. Uh, it's really convenient. And historically, that was a problem for this type of scenario, but not for us. So now, if you have multiple monitors, you double click that icon, you open up your environment, and the environment can stretch across both screens. So you can have needles on one side and Outlook or QuickBooks on the other. You can have cases open, you can send emails, you can keep an eye on everything at once, uh, which is really great. It does support local printing. Uh, so if you have a printer in your office or on your desk and you haven't gone paperless yet, that's okay, because that's still an option. What we do is we connect that network-based environment down through the internet connection to your local printer so that when you have needles or Word or you know, you're generating a document that you need to print, uh, you print it up in the network and it's gonna spit out locally. No problem at all. And I got my gears here, and you know we love our gears. We've got gear logos on everything, so I, I love this metaphor, but it's applicable here because what we're also talking about is the interoperability of all your different programs. Because we're creating a full environment for you with a full copy of Windows, all your programs live there. Because if you just put needles up in a cloud, then needles couldn't talk to Word or QuickBooks, or all the other different interactions you have with different programs would cease to function. But when we put it all up there together, and it all lives in one place, all these different pieces continue to work together. Our cloud platform can support all of them, and they all talk to each other, and they all work, and they're all friendly, and it all just falls into place. All right, quick reminder, uh, you have your questions pane on the right-hand side. If it collapsed, click that orange window. Go ahead and submit your questions. I can't guarantee we'll get to all of them, but when we get to the end here, Mary Ellen's going to kind of look at the ones that got asked over and over again or in a variety of ways. We'll move them to the top of the list. So if you have questions, go ahead and ask. Um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration uh, here. Uh, the demonstration itself is very quick because the whole concept is so simple. Um, but I've been talking about this now for uh, the last 15 minutes, and it's, it's time to show you the goods. So let's drop out a PowerPoint here. 
um, and I have my icon right here on the left hand side that's all set up it's a classic remote desktop connection double click that you got your username and password and we're going in and what this is doing is it's forming the connection down to the data center in Miami getting that environment ready for us and then it's going to push that entire environment to my screen so here we go that's how long it took that's it it's that easy. So I'm now in my cloud-based environment. I have my needles. I have all my office programs, my Acrobat, all my files, everything. It's all here. And I can access it from anywhere knowing that it's protected, that it's safe, and that it's supported, that you have an entire team of people actively watching out for you and your system, and they're available to you with whatever you need. So, like I said, the demonstration here is so simple because the concept is actually pretty simple. It, it's a big deal, but it's a little thing. So let's close this back out and talk about some of the, uh, the details here. So I'm gonna open my PowerPoint back up, and that looks good. All right, so, oh, that was the slide I was supposed to put up when I did the demo, but. Moving on. Pricing. All right. Get to the numbers. What is this going to cost me? Here's the concept. There's two pieces to the price. The first is $199 per user setup fee. Now, what that setup fee is for is to actually create this environment for you. So if you have five or 10 people on your staff, our team is going to go in and create those 10 virtual machines. They're gonna create the machine itself, the Windows setup, they're gonna install needles, they're gonna install uh, Outlook, Office, they're going to set up all the email profiles, they're gonna set up the folder structures, everything that you need, they're gonna go in and basically duplicate and or improve your existing network environment up in the cloud environment. That is a one-time fee, it only happens once, once that user is set up, they're ready to rock and you never have to worry about it again. The ongoing costs are $100 per user per month. Now that is all in, that covers everything. That covers the actual facility, the hosting of your data, all the different software packages you know, that are included, uh, all the Microsoft Office stuff, the Adobe stuff. It also includes all the support required to go with it. So we will keep that environment up to date uh, we will keep it uh, secure, we'll keep it stable, and you can call our team you know, as much as you like uh, to deal with any situations that you need assistance with, all right? So that's your ongoing predictable cost to get rid of all of the complexity that goes with housing your own server, dealing with you know, hourly IT people, uh, and having to upgrade uh, and the costs associated with all of that equipment. All right, a couple of caveats here, things to consider. Internet speed is absolutely crucial. The computers that you use can be just about anything. You can have really expensive desktop machines, but you can have really inexpensive basic workstations. You can have PC, you can have Mac, you can have whatever you want, but you need to have a good internet connection because your entire law firm, the digital aspects of it, now exist in Miami, Florida. Uh, and all of it is on really high-end machinery down there, so everything down there is moving really fast, but you've gotta be able to reach it. So there are a couple of key statistics here. First, we recommend each firm has a minimum of 10 mega megabits per second down and up. All right, those are two separate speeds, and I'll get to those in a minute. But that's like the baseline, and that really is a pretty slow internet connection these days. Chances are most of you have something much faster even at home. But there is a per user concept too, because the number of people you have using this internet connection and using that tunnel through to the data center is going to have an impact on your overall speed. So while 10 is the minimum, regardless of users, 
we also recommend at least two megabytes, I said it wrong before, megabytes per second down and up per user. So if you've got a five user firm, I recommend at least 10 down and up. If you've got a 10 user firm, we're recommending at least 20. You guys can do the math. So how do you find out what you have? This is pretty easy and it's so quick, I'm actually gonna do it right now. Go to this website, speedtest.net. And basically what it's gonna do is it's just gonna test your connection speed. So it comes up, you click go, and it's gonna give you three pieces of data. First is your ping. The ping is basically how long it takes uh, for just a, a tiny piece of data to get out from your computer to the server and back. Uh, and that's four milliseconds. That's pretty good. Anything below 10 is great and is fine. If that number starts climbing up into the 30s, 40s, 50s, then th that's not so hot. Then you've got your download speed. This is how fast, obviously, information comes from the internet down into your office. So we've got 40 megabits per second here uh, on the download and 38 on the upload. Now these numbers are separate because for a lot of internet providers, especially if you're using cable, uh, these numbers can be very different. For cable, a lot of times download is really fast, but upload is significantly slower. So that's why we're clarifying very specifically that you need a good upload speed as well because not only are you bringing data down from the internet, your entire staff needs to upload things back up into the data center as well. So make sure you've got a hearty internet connection that's capable of sustaining the number of users that you wanna bring on board. The nice thing is, unless you live in a very rural area, these numbers, they're easy to get. Internet prices are coming down every day and the speeds are going up uh, and the competition continues to climb. So it's usually just a phone call to bump up your internet speed if that's necessary. All right, a couple of other things to consider here. Uh, we operate on full disclosure here. So I want you to know what does work well and what doesn't. And there are certain things that do not work well with remote computing. The first, is audio or video editing. It's just, that requires uh, enough speed that it needs to happen on the local level. You can't send the video file all the way to the server and all the way back in real time and have it be nice and smooth. It's doable, but you know the, the video, the audio ends up being jumpy. Not that many firms actually do this stuff, but some do and it has come up. So I wanna be exceptionally clear uh, about that. Uh, VOIP and TAPI, uh, these are uh, phone protocols. So it's either voice over IP or the TAPI interface. This has to do with your office phone systems. So if you're using a VOIP system, that still needs to be local as well. Because when you wanna make a phone call, again, you don't want that to come from your office to Miami and then out to the person you're calling. You wanna do that directly to keep that connection nice and smooth. The TAPI interface has to do with hardware. So if you're using like a, a Shortel system or something like that, Shortel will still function perfectly well. You just have to have the Shortel functions on the local computer. Unfortunately, if you're using the TAPI interface with needles, like the double click to dial, that's not gonna work because your needles is up in the cloud, your phone system is down locally. Um, it's it's an unfortunate price to pay, and maybe uh, we'll be able to figure a way around it soon. But for the moment, that's one of the uh, uh, the downsides. Third is WordPerfect, and we we love WordPerfect, and we've had a wonderful relationship with WordPerfect. But this offering this is a Microsoft house, and you can tell I'm a Microsoft fanboy. So it's running Windows, it's running Office, uh, and that means you know it's a Word shop. Um, you know what, uh, I think we have uh, another poll. Marion, can you run, while I keep talking about this, the uh, the word perfect versus word poll? Because I wanna see uh, out of our users how many uh, how many of you are using word and how many of you are using word perfect. Uh, because I was actually surprised by the, uh, uh, the, the Mac uh, versus Windows. Um, so word perfect, if you put word perfect next to word, word perfect is arguably a more full featured word processing platform. It really is a great program. Corel does a great job. Unfortunately, the institutional momentum 
is just not on their side. Uh, Office is taking over the world. If you have Outlook, and chances are you do, you've already got Word. So for our lot of lot of our firm, do we have results? We do. We're at eighty percent Word and twenty percent Word Perfect. See, at twenty percent are my Hangouts, and I love you guys. Um, so holdouts. I meant to say holdouts. <laughs> uh, so a lot of firms. Uh, have used WordPerfect historically, are just anxious. They probably know they need to make the jump to Word eventually, but they're doing whatever they can to kind of put that off. If you're interested in this platform, that might be the impetus you need to, to make that last jump. If the concern is coded documents, if you have a whole bunch of WordPerfect documents already coded uh, and you're just overwhelmed with having to redo those in Word, that's okay. We can help with that. Uh, I've got a great training team on staff. They can either work with your team and teach your team how to recode those documents for Word, or honestly, I've got people that are happy to do it on a project basis. So depending, if you have a, just a whole bunch of documents and you just wanna wipe your hands of the whole thing and turn them over, we can take on that project, come up with a quote for you for an hourly basis, and just get those documents recoded in Word. And that's obviously, you know, whether you're considering the cloud environment or not, every day we're helping firms make that jump. Uh, and lastly is direct scanning. So if you have a scanner either in your office uh, or, you know, uh, on your desk even, and, and it's the same concept as printing, uh, except now you are going paperless, so you need that scanner, the direct scanning doesn't work, which means you can't launch uh, a scanning program in the cloud-based environment and have it connect to your local scanner because they're just in two different places. They're on two different networks. But we can get around it. Uh, what we do, and this works really well uh, for the clients we already have in the environment, um, is we set up folder redirection. So basically, we create a folder on your local network that syncs, connects to a folder in our cloud-based environment. So the scanner scans to that folder, and then that folder immediately uploads the document into the folder in the network environment. So you walk down the hallway, you stick a document in the scanner, and then you come back, you open up your cloud environment, and right there on your network drive in that scan folder is the document. Lickety split, you're ready to rock, uh, and then you can file or store that document anywhere you want. All right? so. Uh, that's it for the challenges. Let's talk about who this solution is for. Are you a good fit for a cloud-based option? So right out of the gate, this is a great solution for small firms or solo practitioners who just don't want to look uh, at the startup costs and the ongoing costs associated with maintaining your own server environment. Uh, for folks that are just getting up and running, that's a significant cost. Uh, and basically, this allows you to have all the functionality, all the features, none of the headache, and a real predictable cost, uh, a nice low cost compared to that uh, you know, uh, startup expense of having your own equipment. So for the small guys, this is a great, easy solution to have all of your information in one place with no headaches. The mid-size firms, uh, this goes either way. We're getting calls every day uh, from firms that historically have been around for a while. They're not a mega firm, but they're not a baby firm anymore either. And they've had their own equipment, but those servers run down. They're only good for so much time. And a lot of folks want to get out of that game. My server's on its last legs. The software needs to be updated. I'm running out of space. I'm running out of resources, and they're just tired of it. So if you have an on-premises network uh, and you want to make that jump, we can help you do that. And we can help you transfer all of that historical stuff into the cloud environment and make that easy. Um, if you are honestly happier with an on-premises setup, and you know, if you join this webinar, you're at least curious, but maybe your boss uh, or maybe the managing partner are just more comfortable having the server on site, that's fine too. Needles works wonderfully on premises. It will continue to do so. So if that's the road you wanna travel, 
then great, we'll be here to support you with that. But if you're tired of it, we can help you make the jump as well. Now for the large firms, uh, a lot of times if you're you know, a really big law firm, you've got the in-house IT staff to manage a lot of these challenges. Large firms historically have that setup. They've got the dedicated server room, they've got the equipment, they've got the staff. But more and more, we found folks wanting to make the jump. And it happens for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is uh, multiple offices. So if you're spreading throughout your city, maybe even your state, sometimes across state lines, and it's tough to have you know, multiple offices and they all need their own setup or they're all remoting into you know, the mothership office and maintaining all of that can be really complicated. Or if you have people traveling and on the road constantly, a lot of firms just wanna wipe their hands of it uh, and have something that's just predictable. So it might be a lot of users to access a cloud-based environment like this, but then they don't need to worry about it. So all three, four, seven offices and all the people that are on the road all over the country, no concerns. They just double click that icon and they are in and they don't have to worry about the rest of it. And the last, and this one is crucial of any size, is the fast growing firms. If you feel like resumes are just constantly coming across your desk and that's kind of the mode we're in at the moment, I, I feel like we're interviewing somebody else every two days, it can be a real challenge to constantly have to add the necessary hardware uh, and set up all those user profiles and make sure you have enough licenses for all the different types of software. It can be a, honestly a pain in the ass. So if you're a fast growing firm and you're constantly adding new users, our team is just a phone call away phone call or email, honestly. You reach out and say, hey, I got two more people coming on board. I got four more people coming on board. I need their environment set up by next week with the software and we'll take care of it. We'll get the environment set up, we'll get Needle set up, Office, we'll get their email accounts all set up, passwords, the whole deal so that when they come in on day one, they got one simple little icon, they click it, they enter the password you, you give them and they're ready to rock. It's all there and ready. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, Brian, you're saying it's it's good for everybody. Um, I'm I am more nerd and less salesman. So the point I'm trying to get across is a lot of times people ask us if a cloud is a right fit based on the size of the firm. And what I'm trying to say is it's not really the size uh, because this can be a good option for firms of any size. It really just depends on the scenario of your firm whether or not you can handle and are happy to deal with the challenges of a technical environment locally, or you're ready to move away from that and hand it off to an entity that you trust. All right, so if I've done my job and you're intrigued, uh, the questions are, what's next? What are the next steps? So first and foremost, if you have questions that I either haven't answered yet or something comes up that we don't answer with the questions we get at the end. And by the way, Mary Ellen, are our, our questions coming in? Yes, we've got quite a few questions. Okay, let, let me wrap things up then. So we have uh, time for this. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get to the end here and we can answer these. But contact our sales team. They are fully versed in our cloud environment. They know what they're talking about. Uh, so feel free to reach out and ask them questions. Uh, the next, there's a couple of documents associated with this. Let me actually just bring this up real quick um, and I'll show it to you. So hopefully you guys go to our website all the time because we spend a lot of time and effort on making this great for you and answering a lot of your questions. So there is a hosting section on the website now. So first stop could potentially be the hosting frequently asked questions. And probably some of the questions that Mary Ellen is holding on to right now are right here because we're getting these questions constantly and every time we get one over and over and over again, we add it to this web page along with its answer. So check that out. But next is the overview, which is mostly what I'm talking about today. But at the bottom, we have these documents and there's two documents I want you to take a look at. First is the order form, which is super simple. This is basic stuff The you know, there's the firm, there's the payment information. Uh, so everybody knows what we're dealing with. If you've purchased needles anytime in the last few years, you're familiar with this document. It's the exact same, you know, scenario. Um, but the next is the terms of service. 
So this does have a real sort of contract associated with it. And the reason being is this isn't just a product you're buying off the shelf. This isn't even like purchasing software like needles where we sell you the software and then you take it into your office and you do with it as you see fit. This is a relationship because now we are providing you with an ongoing service and we have to clarify exactly what it is that we are responsible to watch after for you. In addition to that, we're welcoming you into our house. So think of it as you, you know, renting out space in your network, you probably wouldn't wanna do that. But for our clients, we've set this up in that way, we're welcoming you into our network. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of and everybody's clear on what is allowed and what is not. Not that I think anybody's coming into our server farm and using that for phishing attacks or spam email or anything like that, but that's what this terms of service uh, covers. So for our, our, our legal minds that are attending today, take a look at that document. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to our sales team, they'll be happy to answer it for you. So check out the website and the resources there, not just with the hosting, there's so much cool stuff here. If you don't have your login uh, for our website, contact our support team and get your login because behind that client login is all kinds of resources, not just on hosting, but on needles and there's training videos and there's articles and frequently asked, all, go check out the website, it's very cool. Um, okay, so once we get through the documentation, then you're gonna fill out what's called a network survey. And I closed my uh, Explorer too quickly. Uh, but basically the network survey, and you're probably going to have either your most you know, technical minded person at the firm or a member of your IT team fill this out. But this is a rundown of your network. How many users do you have? And what are their email addresses? How is your email hosted? What domain is it going to be through? Do you want us to take it over and handle it for you? What other software programs do you want installed in the environment? Where are your printers? Anything else we need to be aware of? How much data do you have that we need to get into the cloud? It's all there, excuse me. So when you fill out that information, then we kind of have a map to work with. So you're gonna send us that map and then we're gonna create those virtual machines. Just like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go through for every one of your users, we're gonna create that environment, we're gonna make sure it's packed with everything that they need. Then comes the important part, data migration. Again, if you've purchased needles sometime in the last couple of years, you've probably gone through uh, a conversion. Similar concept. So once we have all the virtual machines created uh, and you've checked out your environments, you're happy with what we've built, we're gonna pick a date. And on that date, we're gonna gather all of your data and we're gonna get it into the cloud. Now, if you're a smaller firm or you don't have much data, it's a you know, couple hundred gigabytes, we can upload it uh, through your internet connection. Um, and once we click that button, your staff will be in read-only mode. Because once you've collected all that data, they can still access it locally, but any changes they make, anything new that they create, won't be part of the new environment because it didn't come with in time. If you're a larger firm or you've got a lot of data, and again, it's not just the Needles database, we're talking all your documents, everything. If it's a couple terabytes, we're gonna need an external hard drive and a little assistance from FedEx because that will actually happen faster than just trying to upload that massive amount of data through the web. So same concept applies. We'll collect all of your data. We'll drop it down on that hard drive. We'll overnight it uh, directly to our office in Miami. Someone will run over and get through security uh, faster than I did and plug that hard drive physically into one of our servers to move that data into your environment as quickly as possible. As soon as that migration is complete, then everyone doesn't need to be in read-only anymore, read-only mode. They can double-click their icon, which will already be on their desktop. They go into their virtual environment and everything's there. And now, from that moment forward, that's where they live. That's where everything is. You can uninstall the local stuff, stick it in a closet, store it, back it, whatever you wanna do but they live in a cloud-based environment. That's where new things are created. That's where the data is gonna be accessible. That's what they work with moving forward. All right. 
Uh, we've got uh, about uh, 10 minutes uh, for questions and I can try and keep uh, things to my promised time. So uh, Mary Ellen, how, how did we do? Uh, we got a lot of questions, so I've tried to sort of group them into like items. Um, okay. So first set of questions is a lot of questions about um, other programs outside of Needle. So where do, where do I access my other programs like Time Slips, QuickBooks, um, and all the other programs that I use on my desktop? Okay, so we're going to take all of those programs and we're going to put them in the cloud as well. There are a couple exceptions. Thankfully, they're rare, but like I mentioned, the video editing and that sort of thing. But all the normal stuff, everything that you're using locally today, we're gonna to move all of it up because we want it all in the same place for two reasons. We want it to be able to talk to each other. So if you've got needles and time slips integrated, they need to be in the same place to continue that integration, to continue to communicate, but also so that it's protected, so the data is protected. Anything that stays local, we can't protect for you. We can only protect the stuff that's up in the cloud. So for every program that is possible, we're going to move it into the cloud so it all lives in one place. Great. Um, the next set of questions is all about Office 365. Okay. Um, is Microsoft included in the price and which programs are included? What if I already have licenses for Office 365? Will I still get local 365 admin side access? And several more questions about is Microsoft included in the price? Okay. So a couple of rundowns here and I'll, I'll just kind of put in a couple of guesses. Um, so yes. Microsoft Office is included in the price. And what's included is the classic Office uh, suite. So most of our firms uh, use Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that's all there. You actually do have a copy of Access uh, if you want it, uh, but Needles, as we know, uses the Sybase database. So if you're using Access for something else, you've got it, no problem. Um, if you already have Office 365, we can do a couple of things. Either we can migrate that over so that it's wrapped in, or you can keep your own copy of uh, Office 365 to use on other machines. So we talked about wanting to have everything in the cloud, and that's still my recommendation, but if you want a local copy of Outlook, we're not providing you with a, a copy of Outlook to install on like your home machine. And if you have like your personal email address and your kid's email address and your work email address, you can set up all those accounts in your own copy of Outlook. Um, and if you have that at home, obviously you can log into the cloud-based environment and have like your work environment. But if you want another copy uh, so that you can have a copy of your email specifically at home, then by all means, Office 365 is a, is a great solution. But we are providing the entire Microsoft Office suite as it exists in the cloud-based environment. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, a quick plug, the um, iOS Microsoft apps are also great. So while I'm a Microsoft fanboy, I do use an iPhone. I love the iPhone, uh, but the iOS version of Outlook, for example, is just a great email, calendar, and contact management program. So if you haven't tried that, if you're using the native Apple stuff, I, I would give um, uh, Outlook a try. It's uh, free in the App Store. Great. Okay, Brian, I know it will warm your heart that we got a lot of questions about backups. Um, so <laughs> some of the examples are, are backups done through the remote environment? How often are backups done? How do we access our backups? And do we still have local on-site backups? Okay. You, 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 are, you are talking to, to my heart and soul here because I am truly passionate about the backup stuff, which is why I'm excited about this. So the backups happen several times a day. Uh, they kind of roll through the servers. And what we do is first and foremost, we back up your needles, your needles database. But we also back up everything that's on uh, the network drive, as well as all of the emails uh, and everything associated uh, with your mail server. Um, all of that is rolled into a backup that is the, the, the first backup is accessible through your remote environment. So you can see it, you can lay eyes on it, you can know that it's there. Then that secondary backup, I, I believe it's once a night, moves over to that second piece of hardware uh, that is in our office. You don't have access to it uh, and that's kind of part of the point. We've got so many people logging in to the primary server that we want a backup that is separate and apart 
from that server that's kind of open to so many different people. It's secure, but we just, we like to play things safe. The Amazon upload, I honestly have to check how often uh, that happens. Uh, I think it's a minimum once a week, but that is like a big dump of our entire server up into their servers, and that is very encrypted. Uh, and honestly, if the state of Florida did slide into the ocean, we would need to pull that down from Amazon ourselves and then parse it out into all the different firms' data and get it back to you. Now, if you want a copy of your data, good on you, because you should want a copy of your data. We're gonna do our very best to watch out for you and take care of this stuff because we still get calls from firms every day where you know uh, a, a server hard drive crashed or something and the last backups from a year ago and it just it makes me cry every time it happens. So I'm really excited that we're gonna be able to take an active role in your backup procedures, but you should wanna take an active role too. Because what I always say uh, is you should treat your data like you treat your dollars. So as the managing partner of a firm, you may not be dealing with the accounting day in and day out. You may have a bookkeeper or an entire accounting team that cuts the checks, that pays the bills, that deposits the checks, but you know where that bank is. And you know you can walk in and walk up to any teller and say, I am so-and-so and I need to see or do something with my finances. You should treat your data the same way. So if you want a copy, we can set that up on whatever sort of recurring basis that you want so that you can store it and have it and know yourself that it's protected too. Good question. Good on everyone who asked that question. Okay, I know we're coming up against our deadline here for the end of the webinar, so I'll try to... No, that's my, I got a little soapbox regarding the backup. <laughs> Sorry, it's, that's um, on me. Okay, so could you talk a little bit about, a little bit about storage capacity, the storage capacity on the uh, remote server and how much disk space you get per user or per firm? Okay, so uh, with that initial fee, you get 100 gigabytes per user. So if you've got 10 users, that's a terabyte of data. Uh, that's a lot of data. Um, if that's insufficient, we can get you more. You let us know how much data you have and we'll get back to you with a price, um, which will be very reasonable. But I'd also recommend if you have more than 100 gigabytes of data per user, take a look at that data because it may be time to archive it. Uh, don't get me wrong, we'll be happy to take the fees, we'll be happy to store it for you. But if you have that much data, chances are a lot of it's old. And if it was physical paper, it would have moved on to shred town long ago. So you might wanna take a look and make sure that you're not holding on to, you know, DOS-based data files from 82. Uh, but if you're not, you get 100 gigabytes per user, uh, which really is a, a significant amount of space. Okay, great. Um, do you want to wrap up now or do you want me to ask a couple more questions? Let's, one more. You got one more good one in there? I don't um, want to hold people up too long. Let me go through and see a good one. Um, well, let's see. Somebody is asking if we are able to, if we have a, a WordPerfect holdout and they want to move <laughs> to Word, can we help them with that process? Absolutely. Uh, we'd be happy to. And we, we do it with care and love, knowing how good a friend WordPerfect has been over the years. Um, but obviously, you get a copy of Word built in. Talk to any of my trainers, call into the support team, or ask for our director of training. Uh, and we'll take a look at the documents you have. Uh, because chances are, you may have you know, 75 coded documents that you're worried about. But when we really get into it, you may only be actually using 20 or 25. Or even if you are using all 75, a lot of what happens now is we can use more advanced coding so that if you have like five or 10 variations of the same type of document, we can make that one document with advanced coding techniques that will you know, be able to generate any of those 10 previous that you had. So absolutely, our staff is here to help. We've helped a lot of people make that jump and we can help you too. All right, let's let's uh, let's call it there. But if you still have questions or if you ask the question and I apologize we didn't get to it, give us a call. 
uh, we are here to help. Um, this is a big deal for us. We're really excited. Uh, this is the first time in a very long time that we've offered any sort of product beyond just needles itself. Uh, so the whole staff here is really jazzed um, and we're available for any questions that you have. So please feel free to reach out. Uh, I know I'm over time, so thank you for sticking with me. Guys, this was wonderful. Keep an eye on our website. I told you to go to the website. I'm gonna keep banging that drum. There is an events section there. These webinars, uh, people are signing up for them like crazy, so we're gonna be doing more of them. Keep an eye out, uh, and uh, thank you again for your time, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone.